Hey, good morning. It's um, 11 a.m. in Huntsville, Alabama, and um, I am Andrew Walker, physical therapist, owner of PhysioWorks, and um, we're going to be covering a topic about footwear, about running shoes today, and um, kind of a controversial topic in some respects, but we'll sort of see what the um, what the research is. So. You know, running shoes, they come in all shapes and sizes and there are many claims that are made. And um, because of this, runners are often unsure what they should believe and what they should choose. And um, perhaps this is even more so for uh, novice runners. So let's um, first look at the importance of shoes. Like how important are they to runners? And um, we ask this because runners have actually been found in research to have a very strong feeling that their shoes are important and a big component in them developing injuries. And um, this uh, has recently been shown to maybe not be so true. 2014 study found that um, the type of running shoes did not have a great onset uh, when a runner's first pain came on. That was with novice runners. So when they first developed their first running pain, they found that it was very unlikely to be due to the actual running shoe that they were using. Um, so this actually then goes and puts into question how um, beneficial the different categories of shoes are. So you know, we've got stability shoes, we've got motion control shoes, and we've got neutral shoes. And um, so what the other thing that kind of puts into um, question the categories of shoes is the um, reason why people are put into those categories. So if you go and look online, if you go to running stores, often people are put into these shoes based on what pronation they have. And um, the idea that if you're over pronating, you're put into a stability category shoe or a motion control category shoe. Um, so I often actually ask my clients, you know, do you think pronation is a good or a bad thing? And I often get this kind of quizzical look. So um, I tell them pronation is actually the body's ability to absorb shock at the foot. It's actually a good thing. And um, just so you um, can get an idea of what pronation is and isn't. So you know, here's my shoe from behind my ASIC shoe. You hit on the heel, let's say, and you go forward. It's not just a pure hinge motion. You have some pronation and you have some supination. So what happens in run the running gait is the heel comes down with the outer part of the heel, the lateral heel hitting first normally. So you hit in a position of supination and then you pronate in. So the inside of the shoe here comes down towards the ground. So it's that motion that's absorbing shock. And then as the heel comes off the ground, the foot goes back into supination, we call it resupination, to create a rigid lever to push off from. So it's this nice rocking motion. Turn the shoe back a bit from the camera. So you hit in supination, you roll into pronation, and you resupinate as you come off. So what is over pronation? So if I was to watch some of the treadmill and see them land on the outside of their heel and roll in a lot, we might say that's overpronation because then there's the thought that once they're overpronated a lot, it's hard for them to resupinate back and actually generate force to push off from. So the idea is when you hit and you overpronate, it's very hard to then get force to push up from. And then the reverse can be true of someone who hits and doesn't pronate very much. So they hit and they pronate, but they don't pronate enough. And the thought being there that you, when you don't pronate enough, that you actually are not absorbing the shock um, of the foot strike as you should do. So that's the age old theory of what happens. But is this actually true? Well, unfortunately, it's not quite accurate in that what is over pronation? So there is definitely pronation that should happen and we want to happen. Is there such a thing as over pronation? 
and how do we measure it? So yeah, there is pro over pronation, but we have not got an earthly idea of what that is runner to runner. We don't have a set of normal values for, you know, if you pronate 20 degrees, that this is too much or too little. We don't know that. And um, what makes what's even more interesting is that if I'm watching you running on a treadmill, my slow motion analysis software, and you hit like this, and you roll in this much, what am I seeing? I'm seeing the shoe pronating relative to my calf up here. Um, what I'm not seeing is actually what's happening inside the shoe. So we know that there's anything between a five and 20 degree difference in the amount of pronation happening inside the shoe. And um, that then tells us that the actual story that we're seeing from watching the shoe pronate when we're watching someone around the treadmill or the road is only a small part of the story. So with that, we have absolutely no certainty that someone is over pronating or under pronating. So it's not uncommon for me to see people come to the clinic who have been put in a stability shoe or even worse, a motion control shoe because they supposedly over pronate and we actually then find that that person, some of their problems or even maybe their lack of recovery from an injury has happened because they're in a shoe that restricts their pronation too much. They're in a shoe that doesn't allow them to actually absorb shock in the way that they need to. So if we take um, a motion control shoe, the theory in a motion control shoe is you hit on the outside here and it's the stiffness in the inside here controls the amount of motion that you have. And stability in motion control shoes. Stability shoe having a little bit less stiffness than a motion control shoe. Um, so I see people who have been told they overpronate and they basically are in a stability shoe, they hit, it controls their pronation, and it over controls it so they don't pronate enough, they don't get any more motion than maybe going from here to neutral and they're not getting shock absorption. Um, the flip side of that is like the, the neutral shoe where someone hits on the outside here and rolls in and the flexibility through the neutral shoe and the cushioning of the neutral shoe allows some pronation. So I typically um, run and do sports in a, um, a neutral shoe. So this is a J A6 gel cumulus, and you can see it's a neutral shoe because I can just go like this, and I can bend the shoe in the middle very easily. If you have a pair of stability shoes or motion control shoes, you'll just find that the forefoot will bend, and it'll be very, very difficult to get bends like I can get with this neutral shoe in the middle here. And very often on a stability shoe, you'll see kind of a build-up of darker material here. And on a motion control shoe, you'll often see a build-up of harder, denser material around the rear foot as well. But, um, yeah, so we go back, though, to the whole question of, um, you know, or the whole idea that it's not easy to say that someone overpronates or underpronates and put them in those, those categories of shoe I just described. What should we do instead? Um, it seems like a nice system to be able to categorize your foot relative to one thing, i.e. Like pronation. But we've just seen that maybe that's flawed. So what should we do instead? And I typically recommend that people go to a running store where you can, A, you've got a large selection of shoes, but B, you can actually run in those shoes, be it on a treadmill or go out of the store and run on the sidewalk or the road and get a feel for what it feels like running. There's no point just walking around in the shoes in the store because that doesn't equate to what you're going to be using them for. But um, so I think that's one component. You need that. You need a store where you can do those things. Now the other component is you need to find a shoe that is comfortable. So we um, in one of the recent research papers that looked at the idea of um, the sort of flawed idea of how we previously uh, prescribed shoes. They used the idea of a comfort filter. So you go to the store and you try multiple pairs of shoes on and you find what is most comfortable for you. And um, it's not to say that you don't let the person in the shoe store try and suggest a category of shoe or even a specific shoe, but you need to make sure that what you have is comfortable for you because if it's not, the odds are that it's doing something to your body that your body doesn't need. Um, now, in terms of orthotics, so for a healthy person who 
is just trying shoes on and is finding that uh, they've got a couple of shoes that they like but they're not quite set on one. There's just still a slight lack of comfort. I find that orthotics can be a good, a good option then. Um, but there, there's no research that shows injury prevention with using orthotics. Um, and there's, there's cases for using orthotics with injuries, and we'll go into that in a minute. But um, there's no case for orthotics reducing injury risk or improving performance. So I typically say, you know, as a, when you're looking at shoes and you're not injured, to consider orthotics as a way of helping maybe you choose and get more comfortable between two. But if you can find a shoe that you like and you're comfortable in, um, I personally see no huge need for you to get an orthotic. Um, so the other thing I think that's good to look for when, you, when you're looking at shoes and looking at a shoe store is to, to buy from somewhere where you can actually exchange the shoe because it's great using either, no, it's not great so great using categories, but it's great using um, the idea of a comfort filter and picking out shoes that you like. But once you actually get a few miles on them, it doesn't have to be that many miles, you might find that they're characteristics of a shoe that you don't actually like so much. So if you go to a shoe store where you can exchange your shoes, I think that's a great a great option. It's um, kudos to stores that offer that. Um, so I think that will help you then to really ensure that you get in the right shoe. Um, and if you're in the right shoe, then it's a matter of uh, making sure that you watch the breakdown of the shoe. In fact, actually, it's important to look for um, are there any manufacturing defects in the shoe? Because a certain percentage of shoes do come out of the um, factory and get through quality control and have defects. So if I take my um, my shoe here, what I this is a, not a new shoe, but I'd be looking to see, you know, can I pull this part away? If I do, we've got a brake test. If I bend here, do I see the material bending gradually, or do I just see a break where there's actually a deficit in the material? If I put the heel on the ground, I want to look and see: is there a vertical line? or is, has the actual rear section of the shoe being glued on in the wrong position and actually is um, really cambering your foot in a, a certain direction. And then you can also do what we call a twist test where you're looking here, to twist the shoe to see if there are any structural issues um, in the midfoot of the shoe. There shouldn't be a break in the shoe. It should be a nice and controlled motion. Um, if, you're if you're looking at the... Um, the live stream right now. You can always go back and um, catch the recording of this if you've missed a few bits. Um, so you want to make sure that there's no de defects in the shoe. And um, then over time, you just want to make sure that you replace your shoes often enough so that the materials have not broken down. And Because um, if you go too long with the shoes, the materials aren't doing their job. And um, if, there, if there's anything in terms of injury provoking with footwear, it's running on shoes that are broken down. That is, that's probably not going to help your mechanics very much. Um, I actually recommend my runners usually get a couple of pairs of shoes when they're buying, and that way they can alternate the shoes. At the end of the day, it's going to, you're going to buy the same shoe probably you know, three to six months down the road. Um, it's not going to cost you any different if you buy them at the same time and you rotate, and if anything, actually may save you all the money because if you keep wearing the same shoe run after run, the material never gets the chance to um, to settle back down into its normal um, back to, back to its uh, original structure. It's going to continue to get deformed. Whereas if you alternate shoes, you actually give um, a chance of um, the material to to settle back down into its its original structure. So alternating shoes is very very good. Um, so when it comes to injury, do we have hugely different advice? Um, Again, typically, I would recommend staying away from the categories of shoes. Uh, there's no studies that show that, um, there's no good studies that have shown that for a specific injury that you go for a specific category of shoes, stability, motion control, or neutral. Um, I think there are some cases for orthotics. There's a case for orthotics in uh, plantar fasciopathy, fasciitis, um, that can be custom, but this research seems to suggest that um, 
over the counter seems to work just as well. Now, if you've got some kind of unusual deformity at the foot that's provoking plantar fascia problems, that's when you know, the custom orthotic can be, can be quite helpful. Um, in patellofemoral knee pain, so anterior knee pain, pain from the kneecap, there's also a case for, do, for using an orthotic there um, to help control pronation. But again, just like we talked about earlier, it's possible to over control pronation. So you've got to be a little bit careful with that. Um, so I do find sometimes someone's been put in, has been running in a stability shoe, and um, obviously that controls the midfoot and stops them pronating to a degree. And then if they get an orthotic in the shoe, and a great example is Superfeet, I find that they're whichever colour you go for, they're typically pretty stiff. And um, sometimes that shoe orthotic combination can be incredibly stiff. So stability shoe, stiff orthotic, and then you really, again, lack pronation and, um, and develop problems. But um, orthotics can be considered for, uh, for some knee pains. Now, hip pains, back pains, I haven't seen a great deal of... Um, Good research that would make me go out and recommend those for patients. Now, it's not to say you can't try it, but in terms of kind of bang for your buck, I wouldn't probably recommend that. Um, now, we've talked about the three main categories of shoe. One other component you can think of as well, and this can be useful for um, injury prevent or not injury treatment, is the idea of um, shoe drop, um, heel drop. So here's your shoe. The distance between here and here, we call that the drop. So basically it's the inclination of the shoe here. And um, some shoes are going to be a lower drop and other shoes are going to be a higher drop. They're having a higher angle. Well, let's say you develop Achilles tendon pain. In someone with Achilles tendon pain, you can offload the tendon by going for a shoe like that's got a higher heel than forefoot, so it has a higher drop. Whereas a shoe that's very flat will probably aggravate the uh, Achilles. Now, I wouldn't advocate um, making drastic changes, um, but it's something that people can consider when it comes to an injury such as Achilles tendon pain. And um, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a new shoe. You can even put um, a little heel raise inside the shoe and see, see how that goes. Um, but there's different options there. But um, again, the main thing when coming back for an injury is making sure you're in the right shoe, making sure it's something that's comfortable. If you have been fitted before and you've never been completely comfortable in that shoe, go and try and fit yourself for a shoe and find one that's comfortable and see what that does to your pain. But um, uh, I'm completely happy to encourage people to try self-treatment. I do that myself for a period of time, but um, if you've got a problem that is persisting, you definitely want to get um, get professional advice because really shoes don't have a huge factor in injuries, injury prevention. Uh, if anything, there are other factors that are much more important, such as um, looking at the characteristics of your training. Um, do you ramp up mileage too quickly? Have you done too much heel work? Have you done too much speed work? Or have you not done enough of those things? And then also the idea of strength training. Are you doing good strength training? Are you doing plyometrics? The strength training you do, is it appropriate? Is it dosed correctly? There's a lot of different things that factor into people's um, injury prevention, performance, and also um, in recovering from injury. So if you let things um, go on too long, you have the risk that it can be much, much harder to treat. And um, then potentially you can have worse injuries, or this is worse for most people, is they're not going to be able to run um, as much as they'd like to, or have to have a prolonged period of time out from running. So, uh, I think there's one person still watching right now. Anyone got any questions about this topic? Um, I don't know every single uh, model of shoe, so I can't give you specific branding or model advice. Um, but any questions about what we talked about, the idea of pronation, over pronation being a very hard thing to consider and not a very helpful thing to base shoe selection off of. Any questions around what you should do to pick shoes or any questions around specific injury 
types and choose. If you have a question, you can write in the comments box there. And um, if you're watching this after the fact, you can still write in the comments. You can also send me a message on Facebook and you can um, send me an email, andrew.walker at physioworkshsv.com. You can call me on 256-529-7395. I'm going to stay on for a couple more minutes. I'm just going to, I need my shoe as a prop anymore, so I'm going to slip that back on. Um, well, while we wait to see if there are any questions around shoes and footwear, um, hopefully you all had a good weekend. I uh, was involved in organizing a race, um, 5K at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. And it was for uh, an organization that I am on the board of, which is uh, Girls on the Run of North Alabama. And um, it was really a great, um, a great event. Had some really fun people running. All the girls who were at the end of their 10 week program, education program, they uh, enjoyed running. And uh, I think we had around 200 uh, runners in total. And, um, had some great people involved, great volunteers. And um, that was a fun thing to do on Sunday. And we got it in, got the race done, got everything torn back down before the rain came so um, shout out to everyone that was involved in that um, hopefully you'll have your weekend as well right, is there anyone with any questions if there is not I'm going to sign off and like I said you can put questions down after you've the comments you can send a Facebook message you can also send an email andrew.walker at physioworkshsv.com or you can call at 256 529 Anyhow, I hope you're all having a good Monday and I will look forward to speaking to some of you soon. And um, any questions, please do drop me a line. Thank you.